Can you love someone you do not like? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. In 1921, Louis Laws became the warden at Sing Sing Prison in New York State. No prison was tougher than Sing Sing during that time. But when Warden Laws retired some 20 years later, that prison had become a humanitarian institution. Those who studied the system said credit for the change belonged to Laws. But when he was asked about the transformation, here's what he said. I owe it all to my wonderful wife, Catherine, who is buried outside the prison walls. Catherine Laws was a young mother with three small children when her husband became the warden. Everybody warned her from the beginning that she should never set foot inside the prison walls, but that didn't stop Catherine. When the first prison basketball game was held, she went, walking to the gym with her three beautiful kids, and she sat in the stands with the inmates. Her attitude was, My husband and I are going to take care of these men, and I believe they will take care of me. I don't have to worry. She insisted on getting acquainted with them and their records. She discovered one convicted murderer was blind, so she paid him a visit. Holding his hand in hers, she said, Do you read Braille? What's Braille? he asked. Then she taught him how to read. Years later, he would weep in love for her. Later, Catherine found a deaf-mute in prison. She went to school to learn how to use sign language. Many said that Catherine Laws was the body of Jesus that came alive again in Sing Sing from 1921 to 1937. Then she was killed in a car accident. The next morning, Louis Laws didn't come to work, so the acting warden took his place. It seemed almost instantly that the prison knew something was wrong. The following day, her body was resting in a casket in her home, three quarters of a mile from the prison. As the acting warden took his early morning walk, he was shocked to see a large crowd of the toughest, hardest-looking criminals gathered like a herd of animals at the main gate. He came closer and noted tears of grief and sadness. He knew how much they loved Catherine. He turned and faced the men. All right, men, you can go. Just be sure and check in tonight. Then he opened the gate and a parade of criminals walked, without a guard, the three quarters of a mile to stand in line to pay their final respects to Catherine Laws. And every one of them checked back in. Everyone. They had learned the commandment of love as practiced by Catherine. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus gives us a new commandment. As I have loved you, so you also should love one another. It is new because it brings his second most important commandment of love to a higher level. In Matthew 22, 39, he said, Love your neighbor as you love yourself. But now, he says, we must love like he loves us. The gospel today begins with, when Judas had left them. Judas left freely on his own accord. Jesus did not throw him out. Jesus gave him, as he does us, the free will to proceed with our life. We can be like Judas in many ways. We may betray him, reject him, insult him, and crucify him through our sins of commission and omission. But his love for us will never diminish. He always invites us to come back to him in repentance. He does not judge or condemn us. He is just waiting for us to come back to him. When we love someone, it implies affection. In almost all instances, we can only love someone whom we are fond of, don't we? Enemies are certainly not part of our circle of love. But Jesus teaches us to love in an agape way, the kind of love Jesus gave us by offering his own life for us. What is agape love then? It is simply wanting the best for the other person. Think of someone who you dislike. Could it be a co-worker, a boss perhaps, who belittles you, curses you when you make a mistake, who plays favorites and unfairly rates you come performance evaluation time? Could it be someone in the parish who gives the Holy Eucharist during communion, but has a filthy mouth, is talked about as an unfaithful husband, and is therefore not deserving of his position? Could it be someone in your renewal community who talks about humility and love, and yet constantly gossips and slanders people, flaunting his wealth, practicing false modesty? Could it be your parent who may have abused you, hurt you, or disowned you? Instead of wishing a person ill, Want the best for every person whom you dislike and even hate. 
The best thing you must want for them is for them to return to God, to repent for their sins, to become better persons. Why don't you pray for them instead? By praying for them constantly, it is not only them you are wishing the best for, it is also you who is changed. Because of prayer, the grace of God comes down equally to you. The more you pray for them and the more frequently you do so, your perspective of them changes. You will notice that you are capable of compassion and love too. You come to realize that you yourself are not a paragon of virtue either. You are a sinner like them, and you need the grace and forgiveness of God to become a better you, a person who can become like Jesus in love and in holiness. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, I pray for the people I dislike. I pray that I may become a representation of your love that is pure and selfless. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.